Hey my friends, Sean Tierney here from theautomationschool.com and in this episode of The Automation Show, we're going to take a look at reading data in over Ethernet into our control logics from a Compact Logics, a Slick 505, and a Micrologics 1400. Now if you watched our previous episodes, you know we did this over DH45 and we did it over DH+, so now we're going to do it over Ethernet. Now before we get started, I want to say a quick thank you to all our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash automation who with by their pledges help keep the automation blog online as well as help the automation show keep going. I also want to thank all our students over at theautomationschool.com. They get free copies of these videos. Plus uh, that's how we can afford the studio and all the equipment we use here. So thank you to them as well. If you know anybody who's looking for affordable automation training, please send them over to theautomationschool.com. With that said, let's go ahead and get started reading in data from those three PLCs into our control logics. Okay, here you can see we're in the program from the episode about Data Highway Plus, and I made one small change there. I put an AFI in front of the 504 read because I've pulled the 504 out and put in its place a 505. So I put an AFI in there because it would never finish because there's no destination there. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and go offline. I'm going to do a file save as. I'm going to put an E in front of the DH because we're also doing Ethernet here. And I'll save that. And then I'm going to go over to the controller properties and update the controller name as well. Excellent. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy some of this code we uh, used before here and paste it in here. And then let's see, we're not going to need this or this or this. Nor are we going to need this or this. Okay. So let me... Let me also get these tags out of here because those are not going to be the right tags. And let's just move these up here and delete that row. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. The first read is going to be from our L23E. The second read is going to be from our, let's do an SLC 505. And the third read is going to be from our Micrologics 1400. So I'll have to go through and create each of these tags. Okay. Two. And three. Now, let's go ahead and go into this block. And I'm going to do a SIP data table read, because we're reading in. This is a data concentrator, so we're reading data in. And the source tag, if you remember when we did the data how 45, and we read in um, from uh, Compact Logics then, that I had a tag called mold one. I had actually mold two, mold three, mold four, and mold five in those compact logics. And it's the same thing here. Those are the uh, tags I created for the VUSE course I teach at theautomationschool.com. And it contains all the information about that particular molding, uh, blow molding press. And I only need one element because it's a user defined data type um, with multiple pieces of data in it. But I do have to create a new destination tag to read it into. So we'll call it msg underscore read underscore l23, whoops, l23e underscore mold1, and we'll make a new tag. And again, this is a uh, user-defined data type, and that type, we imported it in one of the previous episodes, it's iia underscore mold. Okay, so we have to make sure it's that type. Okay, we'll create it. And the next thing we have to do is the path. And this is where I always go to the help file and I look for a message path. Let's list the topics here and we'll see specify the communication path. And that's the one I like to look at because it's very helpful. And uh, so the first thing we'll have to do is go out the back plane of the, well, let's take a look. Let's, let's go to RS links here. Here we can see my ethernet. Here you can see my 505 my MicroLogics, and my L23 right there, okay? So the first thing I do, I need to do is, I'm gonna to have to go out the back plane of the L63 we're programming, and go out to slot one, which is my ethernet module. So those are the first two pieces I need. So back plane here will be one, and then it's the slot number, which is also one. So we'll come back here, 
and we'll put backplane ethernet module. All right, so what's next? So the next thing will be, I want to go out the ethernet IP port on that module. So that's going to be type two. And the next thing will be the ethernet IP address. Okay, so we'll do two comma, then I said it was 192.168.1. Was it 168? Whoops. RS links. 168. Yep. Now, if you look at this guy, after I put in that 168, I got some more information I need to put there. So 168. So the next thing I have to do is go to the back plane again, right? Because you can see at 168 it looks like a little Ethernet card, and then there's a back plane, and then there's a slot zero for the controller. Okay, so that's a little tricky. So we need to do one for the backplane and then zero for the controller. So we'll apply that and click on OK. So that's the first one. Now what we want to do here is we're going to cascade these. We're going to interlock these so that they all try to go at the same time. We know from our previous conversations that the control logics cannot send 100 messages at the same time. It only can do one at a time. And so we don't want to fill up the buffer and then start losing messages, have messages thrown away. Kind of like when you fill up your keyboard buffer, anything you type gets lost. Same thing here, if you fill up the message buffer, everything gets lost. So what we're going to do here is interlock these so we have no chance of filling up the buffer because we're only going to send one at a time because we know that the controller can only send one at a time anyways. So what we're going to do here is say, if the first message is either errored, or done, we'll do the second message. Okay, very similar to the way we did the DH485. All right, so now let's do the uh, slick 505. We'll open that up. This is gonna be a slick type read. The source element, all my data for my molded machines is N750, and I have 50 words of data I wanna read, and we're gonna have to create a new tag to put that into, so we'll call it MSG underscore read underscore SLC 505 underscore data. New tag. Now this, I need it to be 50, a dimension of 50, because I have 50 words. But because it's a slick 500, they're integers, not double integers. So I'll change that to an int 50 and create it. And now we go to communications. Again, it'll be one for the backplane, one for slot one, and then I think it's two for the ethernet, whoops. Two for the Ethernet IP, okay, and then the IP address, 192.168.1. We're talking about the slick, right? That's dot 147. We can see that right here. There it is. Okay. I think that's it. There's nothing, there's no chassis like uh, with the compact logics inside the slick 500. So we'll leave it like that. And uh, we'll click apply and okay. All right, now we'll take this guy here and we'll say if he's errored or done, we'll trigger the next one. Now the only downside of doing this interlocking, as I mentioned in previous episodes, is if you have long timeouts, because then it slows the round robin down, the cycling through all of these down. So when you do this, a lot of times you'll reduce your timeouts. So you just look, if it doesn't reply in a, in a reasonable amount of time, you say, forget it. It's not there, or we get some noise, we're just moving on. And, that, and that's really an effect, uh, uh, you see that a lot on very slow serial networks where that becomes an issue. But not many people use those anymore. So in any case, let's go ahead and configure the, the 1400. We're going to do a, this is again, Micrologix is like SIC 500, so we'll do an SLC read. And again, it's N7 colon 50, because they all have the same program for my VUSE course in them. And then this will be, the new tag will be MSG read, whoops, ML14 underscore data, whoops. Okay, new tag. And again, this is going to be an int 50. Okay, and the path, one for the backplane, one for slot one of the Ethernet module, that's where it is two to go out the Ethernet port, and then his address, I believe, was 
1.1.114. Let's double check that. Yep, there she is right there. Excellent. All right. Now, did we do everything right? We're going to find out because we're going to download it. So let's go ahead and I already renamed it, right? Yep, we'll save it. Well, communications download. We already have the right path. We haven't changed the path at all. Download. And in just a moment, got a couple warnings there because we have AFIs in the program. Go back to run mode. Okay, done, done, done. Now, even though this is coming on every two seconds, you're not seeing these blink because the Ethernet messages are extremely fast. Unlike, um, you know, when we see these cascade down, I mean, you know, 19.2, Data Highway 45, they're not that fast. I mean, they still look pretty fast, but then they're really not that fast compared to Ethernet. So is it really working? Well, to know that, we got to see if we're getting new data in our tags. So let's come down here. And we'll start with the 505. Okay, we'll look right here. Yep, every two seconds we should see some new data. Yep. Yep, you can see this one's changing, that one's changing, some others are changing. Good. So that's the SLC 505. What about the MicroLogics? See if we're getting new data from this guy. Yep, you see those changing every two seconds. Depends on what's going on in the program in the micro, what changes. You can see this counter definitely changes every two seconds. Last but not least, we want to look at the L23E. And that was mold one, so we're only going to get one mold out of that. Okay, we got a lot of bits in here. Current count. Yep, we just saw that change every two seconds. Yep, okay, we see another... Total accumulated value. Nice thing about this is it's all it's all defined for us. So we know what each one of these values is. Let's see anything else here? What do we get down here? Molding speed. Product color. Whoop, you can see the speed's changing. Position's changing. See elapsed time here. Making parts pretty quick over there in the blow molding machine. So uh they change pretty fast. All right, so with that, we have successfully read data into our control logics from a compact logics, especially with that weird path. We have to go kind of to the back plane and the Ethernet card, even though everything's all in one, right? Even though, even though it's all in one, we still have to kind of build that path. And then we went to the slick. 500 and the MicroLogix, those were easy. There was no path. You put the IP address in at the, as the last item and that was it. And now we're reading that data in with all the other data. So with that, that's the end of this episode. I want to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give me a like and a sub. And um, if you know anybody looking for affordable training on compact logics, control logics, MicroLogix, Micro 800, um, PanelView Plus, VUSC, and more, Plan a lot of new courses this this year, hopefully, if uh, God willing. And uh, then please send them over to theautomationschool.com. And uh, if you'd like to support the website, theautomationblog.com, and this show, The Automation Show, please consider uh, making a pledge over at patreon.com forward slash automation. And with that, that's the end of this episode. Until next time, my friends, peace.